Hello and welcome to another weekend of a punter's guide and group one action on the horizon as well with Haydock Park's Sprint Cup, the feature event this weekend. We'll come on to that shortly. As always, Jason Weaver is alongside us and a bit of a rarity this year, Jason. It's going to be run on decent ground. We're used to the Sprint Cup being run in absolute bog. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, we, we're we used to it being really, really testing. The track takes an awful lot of um, hammer and weather throughout the season. We have all those big races uh, run there, whether it's your, your, your big field handicaps and up that sprint track as well. I mean, I think they've done a brilliant job. There's no sort of bias on the track as to, as to where you particularly need to be. Gone are the years of, you know, you had to be stand side and it was a massive advantage. But uh, quick ground or, or decent ground, dare we say it, um, as far as the, the big race is concerned. Yeah, we're going to have a look at the, the, the four ITV races, a couple of group races and a couple of handicaps. Starting with the Superior Mile at 145, the likes of Lord Glitters and Myobra and Pattern Race form, taking on some courses coming out of handicaps. And is this a great opportunity for Lord Glitters to get back in the wins enclosure? He's trying to give weight to real world last time out. Yeah, um, I think it was a good run. Um, but we know his we know his run style, don't we? And that's the the absolute key as far as he is concerned. He's got to be held up. I've seen him run in different races and they've tried to run him or ride him a little bit differently and go forward. And that's when he gets beat. Um, so, you know, he's he's literally relying on there being a strong gallop. I mean, May Danny's going to possibly go forward and Artistic Rifles, another one who's likely to, to push on. And uh, just looking back through it, May Danny, when he won at the glorious Goodwood meeting, Ross Colin was second, obviously, from the O'Meara camp. They know how good that form is, don't they? You know, and he's just been found a, a, an ideal opportunity. I was looking through today, 1.8 million in win and place prize money for Lord Glitters. Um, you certainly wouldn't mind um, <laughs> owning him a bit. I um, have to say that... Um, for me, my Oberon, who ran well in this last year on bottomless ground, has been mightily disappointing considering they thought he was a real uh, group one performer in the making. He won a group three on his return up at Newmarket. He looked destined for much better things. The blinkers go on. Um, just because Lord Glitters is going to be a hostage to fortune, I think my Oberon with the headgear on can, um, can cause a little bit of a shock. Yeah, my own for William Haggis. Uh, plenty of chances for him throughout the uh, the day, of course. Move on to the 220, which is a mile and three quarters handicap. We've got a couple of hatchet seekers in here with uh, B Bino Victrix of Hugh Morrison's and also Valley Forge of Andrew Baldwin. I was looking through the, uh, the, the previous winners. This Andrew Baldwin has saddled two of the last five winners. So it's interesting, he brings the Melrose winner here. Yeah, um, I mean, it's funny, isn't it, how how rapidly they can improve because he won a little race up at Foss Lass and you weren't thinking going into the Melrose, you know, 22 runner, three-year-old Ebor, if you like, um, that he was going to come up with the goods, but he did do. Um, he's taken another hike. Um, he's seven pounds higher. Um, Rosa Bad managed to bounce back to form with a real gutsy win up at Carlisle last time. Um, Priano probably was undone by a slow gallop at Sandown last time and, and got going late in the day. 500,000 guinea yearling um, should should easily be better than where he is positioned at the moment, moment and just relying on a strong pace, I think. That's absolute key as far as he is concerned. And I think, I think let's hope we get the dead eight runners, right? If we get the dead eight runners, Tinwald down the bottom. Richard Hughes couldn't have his team in much better form. If you look at the stats, it says they've only had one winner from 20 or something in the last couple of weeks, but loads of them have been running well. They're in tremendous condition at the moment. George Rook, extra three pound off, runs off realistically a mark of just 79. Big galloping horse. I think he was unsuited to the twists and turns at, at Windsor. And this track just might play to his strengths. Look, He's a lively outsider with no weight on his back mm. and he's an each way play provided we get the dead eight runners. Yeah, I was looking at that as well. Four of the last six have carried less than nine stone. He's the only runner under that little barrier as well. So one for the Queen, maybe at 220. You've got the big betting handicap, the old Borough Cup up next at 255. A real competitive renewal. The only 12 go 
which is a smaller field than, than we normally expect. Top of the weights is Godolphin's Global Storm, who's well held. We last saw him in the e-board. But Ian Williams is a man to follow. He's won two of the last three, and he saddles both Autumn War, run up the last three starts. And your old friend, Indianapolis. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Indianapolis. I mean, how much, how much further can he come down the handicap before he decides to, to go and win? They refit the visor. You've got Ray Dawson on board. There are lots of positives as far as he is concerned. But he just is in that too difficult trade for me, isn't he? I've been hanging off his tail um, and, and, and he's not produced. Global Storm, one of a few that were unlucky uh, in the e got going a little bit late in the day. Sextant, always had loads of ability, uh, but really puts his best foot forward. I think he'd actually be a decent hurdler um, for the team if I, if I was looking further down the line. Nicholas T, we know about him, the Northumberland plate win. And you go all the way down, the Noble Masquerade down the bottom. Absolutely no weight on its back is definitely going through the grades. What about Mr. Consistent in the lineup here? Island Brave. Um, I think he's been a little bit unlucky. Sylvester takes the, uh, the, the steering for the first time in a long time. He's just super consistent. And everybody always overlooks him as if he's going to run a good race without managing to win. I think there are question marks about so many in here. You know, Rhythmic Intent ran a great race, steps up a quarter of a mile. That looks as if it's going to be in his favour. Hopfeld, the likely pace, he's going to go off on the front end. I think Island Brave and um, Heather Main's runners, again, unlucky at Lingfield just the other day, had a head bob go the other way, got one thrown out because it was two pounds light when it came in with a jockey on board. They're in better form than the stats would suggest. And um, go on, the old boy, Island Brave. I think he deserves one. Yeah, he certainly does. I, I can tell you, I backed him the last three times. He got me each way money each time, Northumberland Plate, Shergar Cup, and at York last time out as well. So a decent price is yet. Certainly Mr. Consistent, uh, Island Brave. Move on to the big one then. It is the Spring Cup at 3.30. Uh, and, well, all points to Starman, doesn't it, in the market for sure. I mean, he's only ever been defeated twice. And that is when soft was in the going description. Very impressive at Newmarket. But he's skinny. Yeah, um, he is skinny. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of Art Power. Um, Emma Artiana, I gave him a bit of a shout when he finished second last time. He's probably the one who could cause a little bit of an upset. He's probably the wrong price and he's the each way runner, if you like. So, you know, if I was looking at it that way and trying to get the favourite beaten and one that could go and cause a surprise it would be Emma Artiana. However, this lad, the, the favourite star man, he gave his trainer his first breakthrough Group 1 success. And if you are going to announce yourself on the biggest stage, at the biggest meetings, at the highest level, this is where you have to produce. I find it strange that they went over and ran in France, considering it wasn't his conditions, but he's learning all the time. If this turns up, in anywhere near the top form that he can produce, he just wins, doesn't he? You know, it's a, I've gone round and round looking for something to cause an upset. Starman, if his trainer can get him there in top form, will win. Yeah, I think it, it looks too simple, doesn't it? It just looks like that. I mean, he was so impressive. He had some of these behind him in Newmarket, uh, as you mentioned. And he did say the extra half a furlong and that slightly tacky ground caught him out uh, in France. But what he's seen on decent ground up at York and Newmarket, uh, last season as well. He, he does look the standout candidate, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's, he's super tough. He's super tough. I mean, creative force. I had a little chat with William Buick the other day when he rode a double. Um, he seems flexible as regards trip and ground. Supremacy is on the on the recovery. But when you go down through them, I mean, you know, Glenn Shield, um, Garris, uh, Chill Chill, Happy Romance, they're not good enough, are they? You know, they're not good enough up at this level. So he gave him his breakthrough Group 1 success. And if Ed Walker wants to announce himself on the biggest stage, he's got to produce this lad to win. Emma Artiana will be the each-way shout. That's the Group 1 action then. Uh, hey, I've got a couple of decent betting each, though, over at Ascot. Let's have a look at one of those, uh, shall we? The, the 310, the Lovetsa uh, stakes a mile and a half again. Smaller field than we're accustomed to in this contest. Only 10 go to post. Roger Verne's went the last two years. He's got the top way here, Alphadel. But the market likely to be headed by Sir Michael Stout and Ryan Moore with Waran. Yeah, um, and, and quite rightly so, I suppose. Got that lovely improving 
profile. Um, if you ever want to watch a race back and see one win a little bit under wraps, just look at Chalkstream last time at Ripon, uh, managing to um, to beat uh, the horse of um, Roger Charlton. He just escapes me at the moment. He came out and won again since at Ripon. Um, so, uh, sorry, at Beverly last time. But Tom Marquand, it was all gathering him up and just winning with a little bit more in the locker. So he's a big, big opportunity and improver for Her Majesty. Um, so I would definitely give him plenty of respect. But I have to go at the top. Alpha Dell I bumped into Richard Hills, who's one of the, the racing managers, along with Al Angus Gold at the Royal Meeting. They couldn't see this getting beaten. They really couldn't see this getting beaten. And sure enough, he did. He's bombed out. They step him up to a mile and a half, which is absolute key as far as he is concerned. Not very often you say at this time of year, you know, 98, he's absolutely thrown in. This could be miles better than a handicap. Yeah, could give Roger Vane three wins on the bounce as well. He knows exactly what it takes to win this contest. It was pop over from Ascot, then whip round the M25 to Kempton for their feature race, the Group 3, a September stakes. Joffa 240, a smaller field than usual. And this is the race that Enable has been using in recent times to go on to Arc, prepping for the Art of Triumph. And news this week that Hookham looks like he's destined for Paris uh, next month as well. But uh, although he's a clear favourite, the, the, the rating suggests he hasn't got as much in hand as the prices suggest. Yeah, um, I think it's because we, we <clears throat> excuse me, we think that he's going to be better coming back down in trip to the mile and a half. And this is going to open up a good few doors for him, you know, whether it's the Breeders' Cup or, or where he's going to decide to go after this. Um, they may even go back up in trip. And of course, they can run him as an older horse over in the Irish um, St. Ledger, of course. So all things are open with him at the moment, but he's got better. You know, we're guaranteed a good pace. Outbox is going to go forward. Prince of Aaron was seven and a quarter lengths behind Enable in this last year. He's won over two million in win and place prize money. Remarkable old horse for, for Charlie Fellows. Fox Tal, loads of ability, doesn't win. Um, and Hamish, what on earth? I mean, how did he not run in the e-ball? We got that bit of rain. We got everything. It just seemed, you know, I know they had to pull him out an hour before the race, but it was a major disappointment for the race. How good is he? How sharp is he going to be? He'll have to be very, very sharp if he's going to lower the colours of Hookham around here. And um, he's probably the one who's going to make it a bit of a prize for you. There we are then, staying with the uh, favour there. Who can take it through on the bounce and 4-4 uh, this season? There's a few other races as well, so stick with us uh, throughout the day on our social media channels and in the shops as well, because Jason can look at a few other races for us. But they're the crust uh, of the big ones over the weekend. Any idea of, of a best bet for, for, for us this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking down through them, I wanted to go with um, Tinwald um, a little bit earlier on, but I think that my Oberon, um, you know, I know Lord Glitters, he gets the races run to suit when he goes out to Maidan and he that, that track suits him, you know, that late thrusting style. Haydock on quick ground is going to need a lot to go right to get his head in front. I think my Oberon with the blinkers on. Yeah, on my Oberon. I did see off air as well. You've got off air, Mondamedge is running later on at Haydock as well. So <laughs> there's another one you've been following on the tail of. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, there's plenty um, that you, you, you tend to get stuck into, don't you? And it's, it's one of those. I will be keeping a really close eye on Indianapolis a little bit later on. If I see him looming large at the two pole, I'll be, um, <laughs> I'll be throwing my slip at the screen. <laughs> and lower league this weekend for your goals galore. Sadly, international's taking over, so no upper end, but we've got the bottom end and that's what you like, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I just hope the wind picks up and the rain starts to come down just after half time, and it'll be a little toe punt time to get one up in the top corner. But uh, yep, yeah, the shopping list will be at the ready. No good last week, but um, I went a little bit. I, I was I was going too adventurous, so we'll just go down to the eight teams to score <laughs> for the goals galore this week. Keeping it simple. And my Obron, fingers crossed, to give us a big winner uh, on the day as well. Thanks to Jason then at four joins. Stay stick with us throughout the weekend across our channels and in our shops. We'll hear more uh, from Jason. We can see him on ITV as well, covering the action at Haydock, Ascot and Kempton this weekend. But wherever you are back in, the very best of luck.